Hey, Dr. C here with you. So can thyroid nodules shrink on their own? This is a really good question. Thyroid nodules are important, they're prevalent, and they're thankfully getting some attention. They're abnormal lumps of thyroid tissue that develop in the gland, and they're especially common. Women over 40, they're quite prevalent. They're usually benign. Uh, and when they are present, however, we want to make sure that there's not been negative changes leading to thyroid cancer. The nodules, about 3 to 7% of them can become cancers. That's why we care about them. That's why we screen for them and track them. And so the question is, can they shrink naturally? Do you have to always have surgery? Do you have to have invasive treatment? Or can they go down on their own? So let's go in a little more detail here. So what are they? Well, these are clumps. These are thyroid follicles. They're clusters of thyroid cells that form irregular masses. Normally, thyroid follicles are even and smoothly distributed throughout the thyroid, but they can cluster up in ways that don't allow for normal cell growth and regulation. Now, most can be asymptomatic and harmless, but some can actually disrupt thyroid levels and some can create local pain or swelling. You know, they can impact swallowing or speech or other relevant factors. And how common are these in more detail? You know, both genders get them. They are more common in women and they're more common with age. Really shocking st statistic I'm going to share with you here. Your age in percentage is about your risk of nodules. So what do I mean by that? Well, you know, I'm in my 50s, so you could say someone who's 50 years old has about a 50% chance, 5-0, of having thyroid nodules. They're very prevalent, and it's good to be aware of those. They're even more common in those with thyroid disease and more at risk for becoming cancerous in those with thyroid disease. So do they ever shrink naturally? Let's talk about some scenarios in which that can occur. Well, there is a thing called autocorrection. They can just shrink or disappear as your thyroid heals spontaneously. It can just happen for no clear reason whatsoever. And there's also times to where deliberate actions can make them more likely to shrink. So a big controllable factor is iodine, is getting the right amounts. You know, this has been called the Goldilocks nutrient, like uh, porridge is not too hot, not too cold. You want the right amounts to help, but not excess amounts. And that's the thing. Those prone to thyroid disease have genetics, making them not tolerate excess amounts of iodine. So getting the balance right is super important. I explain that in detail in the thyroid reset diet. You can know whether you're at a good range or not and what you can do to help with that. There's also been data saying that the TSH, keeping the TSH regulated, can also make nodules less likely to grow. The main take-home point there is that if it's well above range in the, the 10, 10 to 15 or 20 points or above, that's not good. And that's not good for a lot of other reasons either. You wouldn't want that to be that high. Many who have it that high are symptomatic. The first steps are controlling diet in terms of improving TSH scores. Some do need medication. If you are on medication, it's important to take right amounts to keep the TSH on the lower side of normal for most. Not below range, there's no added benefit. We also know that autoimmunity can be a factor. So if someone has Hashimoto's thyroiditis, their level of antibodies, the amount of inflammation in their thyroid, that can predict how likely nodules are to grow and become problematic or shrink and not create negative issues. So being aware of and managing thyroid antibodies is also a big thing. And another factor is insulin resistance. Now, this is a factor by which the body can be pushed into a state of growth just overall. You know, if we're at a state where we've got insulin resistance, we're growing to form new fat cells and to make the existing fat cells larger. And that same process can also cause abnormal growth in tissues in the body, including thyroid nodules. And action steps to help with that, the biggest single factor is weight loss. So if, if weight loss is appropriate for someone and they can achieve that, that'll make them much more likely to have their nodules shrink as well. So what are the odds of nodules becoming dangerous, you know, as far as benign versus cancerous? Well, a couple ways to look at that. So about three to three to seven percent of nodules do become cancerous. The flip side of that is, you know, 94 to 97 percent of them are benign and will always stay benign. So knowing nothing other than that, the odds are pretty favorable. The cancer is higher for those that have had histories of exposure to radiation. And, you know, that's something that we talk about rather loosely, but really it means high amounts of ionizing radiation. 
Microwaves don't emit radiation. Well, not, not ionizing radiation. Uh, Non-ionizing radiation comes from a lot of sources. People emit it. You know, food emits it, believe it or not. Food that has potassium does. Just being alive in the modern world, the, the Earth gives it off. But ionizing radiation is a more narrow subset. So if you've had a lot of uh, radiation, such as being in or near a nuclear power plant, or very high amounts of CT or PET scans. That can be that can be relevant. In the past, radiation was used a lot more indiscriminately. It was common to have ionizing radiation as a treatment for swollen tonsils, for example, and that can be a factor leading to thyroid nodules. Most types of exposure like that aren't really around that much anymore, which is good. Age is also a factor for the risk of nodules. You know, the older we are, the more likely it is they can become cancerous. And then also the presence of autoimmune conditions, especially Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So what do we do in terms of screening and monitoring them? Well, one thing I encourage is a monthly self-exam. You know, take a minute each month and palpate your thyroid, watch your thyroid as you're drinking water. I've done some videos showing you how to do this. And what happens there is, if there are changes, you're the first to catch them. I want to be clear, it's you shouldn't know exactly how things should feel your first few times, but by doing that regularly, you learn what's normal for you. And if something is not normal for you, you're the first to catch that. So self-exams are super important. It's also good to have regular ultrasounds, and that's often how nodules are first identified. Based upon the findings of the ultrasound, that'll determine how soon you would need another, and also how frequently they should be done, and whether or not there's more steps needed, such as biopsy. So that's the main thing, really, is the self-exams and the ultrasound. So what are the, what's a summary? What is, what's the big take-home about the natural steps that can help nodules shrink? Well, you want to really make sure that you're managing iodine, you know, getting enough, not too little, not too much. The main risk for most is getting too much in the modern world. Making sure TSH is at a reasonable range, being aware of and managing insulin resistance, you know, losing weight, following the metabolism reset diet, if that's appropriate for you. Those are some of the most big factors. And then diet and lifestyle factors. We know that nutraceuticals can make a big difference. There have been big studies about things like prunella, boswellia, curcumin, certain kinds of spirulina. And they've been clinically shown to help nodules decrease by about 70% for about three quarters of people. So most people can see a pretty dramatic reduction in nodule size with nutraceuticals. I made a line called thyroid specific formulations. Within that line, I made a blend called nodule control. Super simple. And that's basically the things from the clinical trials in the amounts that were used in the clinical trials. In the diet, it's also good to have a wide range of vegetables, phytonutrients. Some have been concerned about goitrogens, about vegetables that could be from the cruciferous family, thought to worsen the thyroid. They're actually good. They're actually fine. And they cut the risk of there being a lot of problems, including thyroid cancer and also including nodules. So they're nice to include. So wrapping this up, can nodules shrink on their own? They can. Now, they don't always, but there's a lot of things you can do to push the odds in your favor. And we've mentioned those key ones. So get a regular schedule about your self-exam, you know, your doctor's exam, and also ultrasounds. Take a look at natural options such as regulating your iodine, losing weight if needed, using nutraceuticals, and stay on top of your nodules. Most people can cut the risk of them growing or becoming cancerous and manage them safely by doing stuff like this at home. All right, Dr. C with you. Take great care. We'll talk again soon.